Hey YouTube, in this video I'm going to pair this Hakara motion sensor into Home Assistant. I'll be using it for an LED light strip down in the kitchen. I'm going to create a couple of simple automations which you can follow through. Code will be in the blog post, link down below. If you want to pick up one of these little motion sensors that come around $15 or £15 uh, and there's going to be an affiliate link down below. This is Gio from Digital Spring Media and in this channel I'm documenting my smart home journey so please subscribe and follow if you're interested. Now let's get a closer look at this motion sensor. A few things to note, we've got the reset and sync button over here, we've got the illuminance sensor right on top here, here we've got the battery compartment and you would just flip it and it's a standard uh, CR2450, 3 volts and be aware, here you go, clip it back in. Here we've got some rubber padding so it can sit like this. But you've also got this stand uh, that comes in the box so you, you would peel off this protective film. Uh, you've got both on both sides, so on one side you would stick it and on the other side it would uh, stick here. And then you can uh, rotate this. So when installing this, it's really important to understand exactly the range and the detection area so you get the best out of the motion sensor. What you do want to do is you want it to triggering at the right time and you don't want it to triggering, uh, you know, in, inadvertently. It uses the Zigbee protocol like all of the other Akara uh, sensors, which is brilliant. And this would pair easily with your Combi 2 sticks, which I'll show you right now. So now we get to Decons. I'm using specifically Foscon. And it's very similar to the other two motion sensors I've already set up. Log in, go to sensors, and add new sensor. We're going to pick the vendor over. And at this stage, what you need to do is you need to find this sync. There you go. Find this sync button and tap it. Okay, so now that paired successfully, the sensor is ready. So just click ready. And here we have it. So we have our two sensors. We have a sensor, a light sensor, and we have a uh, temperature sensor. And also, obviously, we have the motion sensor. So I would recommend renaming this at this stage to um, wherever you're going to put the sensor. So I'm going to put this sensor in the kitchen. So I'll be calling it kitchen motion sensor. Now that we've added our sensor, it is time to go and find out what are the entity IDs in Home Assistant. And this is really important because Home Assistant might just give it a random name and you want to name it how you want to name it and that would help you when you build your automations. So go to configuration, go to integrations, go to Foscon and find the motion sensor you just added and whatever name you gave it. So I gave it kitchen motion sensor, so click on it and here we have it. We have the entities. So our first entity is the one that tells us if there is motion or if there isn't. So click on it and we have our entity ID. So because I already set this up previously, I've already put the name I wish, but in here you would replace this with whatever value and whatever name you want to put in. I always like putting underscores between words. That's not my naming convention. So my one's called Kitchen Motion Sensor. The luminosity sensor, which will help us understand if uh, how much light uh, the sensor is perceiving. I've also added that in and I've renamed that also in the same way. The battery sensor hasn't been renamed, so I would go about doing the same thing. So kitchen sensor battery level, that will help me to understand which um, sensor it is. At this stage here you could uh, build the automation from here directly but I like to do it coding. I think it's just a bit more fun and you have bit, you understand more how it works. Let's do that right now. Now traditionally you would have an automation.yaml file with all of your automations in but I've taken the step to start splitting them out now. As you can see I've got the line 100 and it's really confusing to understand what to do. So I split it out and I'll show you how you can do it too. I created an automations folder and within the automation folder I've created several number of folders and within the folders I've got separate YAML files. 
and in each YAML file there's one automation and that's how I like to structure it. There are several different ways you can structure it. I'll link down below a, um, a link to the official guide when you can go and find out the best way for you. But this is the way I'm doing it and if you want to follow through this guide um, you can do the same thing too. So not to split your files in this way we need to go to the configuration.yaml and add one line of code. Okay, so we're in the configuration.yaml file now, and this is what you would have. You would have your automation integration, and you'll have the include command, which, which basically means pull everything from that file, automation.yaml, and bring it into the configuration.yaml. What we need is, we, we can keep that there, so your auto, existing automations uh, keep working. But I'm going to add another line, I'm going to call this split and in the split I'm going to add in everything that's in the directory uh, dash automation so everything that's in automations would come in as a list and, and that would uh, populate the file so it's important to note it's, uh, it would only work if you have one, um, one automation per file and you're not allowed to have lists within the automation but I'll show you that right now so remember to save and restart uh, Home Assistant when you make this change so I created a couple of folders, kitchen and motion, and now I'm ready to create my first file. So the way I'm going to call these files, I'm going to call them by the action of what they're doing. So I'm going to be doing turn on LED light strip. And remember at the end, always dot yaml. So now we've got an empty file. Now if you were to save this and reload, you'll, it will error out. So you can't have empty files there sitting around. So we need to fill this automation right now. So now we're ready to set our first automation. In our first automation, we're going to use our motion sensor to detect presence and we're going to turn on our light strip. I'm going to set the light strip at like 255 brightness, at so the maximum brightness. I'm going to set the color as red. Now the first thing you need to do is you need to write the trigger. The trigger, we're going to use our new kitchen motion sensor, the Akara motion sensor, and trigger that state. So we'll do that right now. Okay, so now we need to look at the action. So we're going to call a service called light.turn underscore on, and then we're going to find our entity ID of our light strip. In my case, kitchen underscore light strip. So within the data, this is, these are the parameters that we need to set that I've showed you previously in the developer tools. I'm going to set the color name now first and I'm going to use red. I'm going to set the brightness to 255. I'm going to specify the entity ID again, which is the same entity ID as the previous one. Now remember to indent everything appropriately. There you have it. You'll have the green tick and save this. Reload your automation. Okay, you might have noticed this, so I reloaded it and it didn't work, so I've noticed I was missing a T. I'm going to save this and reload. So again, go to Configurations, Automations, Execute, and then go to Overview, and now we have it. Okay, good. So now our light is turning on. Fantastic. But bear, note that the motion sensor is clear, so it will, when you trigger it manually, it's going to trigger the trigger. What I mean is, so when you trigger it manually, it's going to pretend that the trigger was triggered, even if it wasn't. So state hasn't changed on the motion sensor, but it actually is uh, working. So now I'm going to go and actually walk up to the motion sensor and trigger it. You can always change the state from here manually, so you can set it to off. And in this way, the motion sensor is clear. The light is off, motion sensor is clear. And, and it's on now. That, that was really immediate. Now, thing to note is, if you do turn it off, and while the state is still detected, and if I trigger the motion again, it's not going to turn on again. So it will only turn on when the state is on, but it will do it only once. It's not going to do it constantly, continuously. So that's one thing to note. So while you're testing, um, you need to go back, set it off again. So go clear, and then swipe up, and it works again. Now there is, a sufficient, there is a sufficient amount of light in this room, so maybe we don't really require the light turning on. And you can see the sensor moving as I move this around and making it darker 
and, and, and it refreshes quite quickly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set a condition in the same automation to actually uh, determine a certain level and you need to determine the level that suits your room and, and you know, your circumstances of when you want the light to turn on. But I'll just give it a, a, a level of 100 in this example. So it's well below 193. So when it does detect motion, the light bulb should stay off. Okay, so we're back into the YAML file and we've got our condition set up now. I'm using the numeric state and I'm looking for my entity and this entity is my motion light level and I'm looking for a value below 100. And that's it really. So you add these three lines of code, save the file, reload the automation and then let's go and test it. So motion sensor is off, I need to stay really still and I'm going to trigger the motion now and the light is still off as you can see. So that did work. Now we need to try to see if I cover the light and I trigger it, will it turn on? So this is quite interesting. So it wouldn't turn on because the trigger was the fact that the uh, motion sensor was detected. So even if you do cover it later on, it's still not triggering. So it's something to note. So if, if there is motion happening while the light level drops, the light won't turn on with the current level, with the current code. So let's see if we can simulate a darker situation. So it's off, and there you go. That was, that was fast, but I managed to show you how you could um, simulate darkness and turn on, turn on the light. So now we need to do the reverse, we need to turn off the light when there's no more motion. So go back to your folder, create a new file, Remember to add in the .yaml at the end. Okay, so in this, what this code does, it looks for the state off, and it's looking for the state off to be for 10 minutes. So we're looking for, there, there's no more motion, and there hasn't been motion for at least 10 minutes. And this is something you need to go and find out what is the most appropriate thing for you to do. But for the purpose of this video, I'm going to comment this out, and I'm going to add seconds five or maybe just say one. I'm gonna save that and reload automations. So now we're in a state where our kitchen motion sensor is detected, our light strip is on, and whenever the, whenever the motion is no longer detected, after one second, the light should turn off. So motion is clear, and the light bulb went off. So that was immediate. So the performance with this motion sensor is extraordinary for the price that you pay for it. I mean, you can check the price down below. I've got an Amazon link there, affiliate link, but it is just you know ridiculous the the quality you get out of these products. I, I thoroughly recommend them. I do have other motion sensors which I'm going to show you now, and you can compare and see different dimensions. And I will do a separate video in the future, uh, putting them one against the other in Home Assistant. Now in this part of the video, I'm going to show you all the parameters that you can use with your specific light. So go to your developer tools, services, and look for the light on service. Light uh, dot turn underscore on. So here you've got all the values that you can possibly accept. And bear that in mind that some of these values are not compatible at the same time. So you, if you're specifically uh, specifying a color name, then you can't uh, specify the RGB color, I believe. But correct me if I'm wrong in the comment section. And what you can do is, uh, you can fill it in with example data. And when you fill this in with example data, it actually doesn't work, and I'll show you. Um, let's go with the light strip. So if I call the service, I'll get an error message. And this is what I was saying, is you cannot have more than two uh, of the different types. So it is a bit confusing of why this, this uh, pre-filling thing doesn't work, but you just need to um, understand how it works. So the most basic version of the turn on is just the entity ID. If I call the service, that would work. So going back to my dashboard now, you can see the light turned on and it turned on with the previous setting that I set it up previously as. So if I wanted to change the color, so I would go color name green and call the service. 
Now we're going back to our overview. Now we've got green. And this is how you can learn how to change uh, things. Okay, so the brightness percentage would be 1 to 100, but the actual brightness uh, value is 1 to 255. So you can see the accepted, acceptable values in the description. So follow through this, read this, and this will give you uh, the exact uh, idea. Please subscribe to the channel if you want to see extra content and look at a Akara versus Philips who uh, let me know if that would be something that you'd be interested in. If you're interested in other products, other Akara products, I've got a contact sensor which I use for my garage door. I've got a, um, a temperature sensor and humidity sensor I use in my fridge. And I've got th those two videos and I'll link them right here. So I'll see you in the next video.